It's lovely to meet you this evening. I don't get too much of an opportunity to meet people at the doorstep because I use a walker and haven't been able to go to door to door. So it's wonderful to come to groups like this and meet you. I'm here running for Hobby Chair for several reasons, but the main one is I have seen a decline, steady decline over the last 12 years in the quality of life for all the municipalities and democratic rights. And I say that based on evidence of audits that my husband and I have conducted within the municipalities and which we have reported to the region and to the municipalities with no effect. So I'm here this time to try and do the job of regional chair and bring our life back to a quality of life that we can all enjoy. Um, the main issues that I've been hearing from the municipalities has been affordable, and subsidised housing, which are two different things, and the official plan. The official plan has had more comments on how it's been affecting people's lives and businesses than any other subject. And I, I was blown away when that happened because I didn't expect it, did not expect it at all. My qualifications are impeccable for this job. I was in corporate administration for uh, 20 years, and that's what this job is. Chief Executive Officer of Halter. So I'm right in the right place and the right position. And I have um, got references as a National Quality Assurance Consultant. If you want to know what quality assurance is, it means I, I audited the service and if it didn't meet up to par, it was gone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John, for your introduction, and thank you, everyone, for attending. This is probably one of the biggest uh, turnouts we've seen for any Meet the Can, they say. And I'm very disappointed that my uh, competitors haven't decided to show up. I guess they don't think rural issues are important enough to attend. But I appreciate you are coming tonight. My name is Colin Best. I've had the honor of representing you for the last eight years throughout Masquay in the rural area. I hope to continue that effort. Please see my brochure at the back of the room, which those uh, two lovely ladies are, uh, and gentlemen are uh, posting there. I can't, in two minutes, I can't highlight all the issues there, but in the next two hours, I hope to hear. Please uh, see my uh, Facebook account, uh, website, and brochure. Basically, what I'm looking for is providing the services you need and can afford and fairly taxed, as well as protecting your neighborhoods against adverse influences such as quarries and intermodal, and also planning our future. The next uh, region and the town plans are going to be the next term of council. Whoever's up here that's going to be on both local and regional council have to, to decide what they want in your future, and I'm looking for your input. Thank you, and I hope to uh, hear for your support on October 22nd. Well, thank you very much, and again, uh, John and uh, Liz and all the organizers getting us together here tonight. You would ask to stand and join, not be heard. So one of the things I was blessed with was a reasonably good voice. So hopefully we're projecting well at the back there. Now, one of the things on uh, the cheat sheet, as I refer to it, when we knew that this was happening, they had asked, uh, present the reasons why they are the best candidates for the job. And now I'm talking about myself, why I think I'm the best candidate for to continue as mayor. Pick up the uh, brochure at the back uh, there, and I'll be very quick, very brief, but this is really what I'm all about and what this job's all about. It's about leadership, I've demonstrated that. It's experience, I've demonstrated that. It's called common sense. You can't legislate common sense, but I use it all the time. Stability, this is a very stable community. Uh, credibility. It goes without saying that I believe I, as one individual, have that credibility. And also, something else that I'm about is I'm approachable. I have what I refer to as that open door policy. Many of you have experienced that over the years. I'm also dependable. I'm here tonight. I think Councillor Best talked about uh, some of that earlier on. You have to depend on individuals. I'm one of those. Proven track record. Have a look at my track record. It's beyond approachable. It's, it's excellent as far as I'm concerned. Last but certainly not least. Now, 
I know Trump said that the other day. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, have a look at it. Uh, fiscally responsible, and I'm about the bottom line, that's for sure. So on October 22nd, Mark X for Prince. <laughs> for everybody to just come forward and participate in this debate and this is my first time. I just wanted to introduce myself. I hope you hear me in the back. Uh, no. no? Can you hear me now? Okay, good. Okay, my name is Wasim Ahmed and I'm a Miltonian. I've been here since four years now and uh, have happily married with five kids and they all go in different schooling system here in Milton. I've been running multiple businesses in uh, Milton as well as outside Milton. I have, um, you know, I've been doing business since 2003, third party logistic business. And, uh, you know, I've been running that with two branch offices in US and Pakistan. And it's really successful and I wanted to see Milton to grow. Business wise, I wanted to see the, uh, the growth it's socially, environmentally, and economically sustainable. The Milton supposed to be economically sustainable. We need to see Milton to be a role model. This is one of the reasons why I decided to run. There are many issues, like Anne said. You know, there are many issues in this Milton. You know, the lovely place that we call home. That there are tra transit issue, the traffic issues. I was in Campbellville last weekend, actually. And I was speaking to different number of people there, and there was speeding on the golf line that they were, they were talking about it. There are quarry issues. There are water like if the quarry goes through the the water line, the water bell can be damaging, and it can be you know can contaminated. And you know these are the issues that I'm standing for, and I wanted to make Milton the better place to live for all of us. Thank you. You're first. I'd like to say that I've been involved in my own city, Burlington's um, council, attending meetings, delegating. I've probably got the record for the number, most number of delegations and uh, the region, etc. Since uh, 1997, when I ran for regional chair, when it wasn't even elected. So yes, I'm very interested. I take a very uh, firm stand on our councils, our municipalities, and our region following rule of law as it's supposed to be and protecting your rights, your property, and your money. Councilor Bass, do you want to speak on that? How many council meetings you've attended? <laughs> <laughs> that was the question. Okay, well, as the mayor can attest, I think I've missed uh, two meetings in the last four years, and mostly uh, due to uh, either my ill health or one of my family members. And. Uh, if, if all you have to do is, if you're looking for attendance at any uh, council, regional, or local, is look at the minutes and you ask who's there. And I'm there almost 100% of the time. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, John. Yeah, my wife will share with you. I've been probably at too many council meetings, so, uh, whatever that is. But again, as Colin mentioned, you go back, say, in this uh, last four-year term, and with the exception of. Uh, that bit of a stay uh, because of my health there back a couple of years ago. Could not miss one meeting other than I think one or two uh, about a year or so ago. So yeah. I, I have what I refer to as a perfect attendance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been attending the council meeting lately, and uh, I've been really honest. But uh, ever since I've been involved in the. Uh, to run a, uh, be as a candidate, I've been involved in the town council meeting as well as I've been part of the community for a long time. I know what is going on in the community, and I've been part of doing different uh, community work as well as uh, raising funds for different organizations. So this is the part of that uh, that I think I, it's, uh, it's, it can be added to the town council meeting that I've been in addition to that I've been attending the council council meetings as well. 
appreciate that. Uh, as uh, some of you may know, I also attended the uh, site meeting as well as the action meetings. And I thank all those people that are involved with it. I noticed uh, a lot of the board members here. Actually, within days of the announcement, uh, the mayor and I met with the Minister of uh, Environment, uh, Jerry Phillips, and explained our concerns, not only for this quarry, but also the hidden quarry. It's something that, the, as a regional uh, chair of the Planning Public Works Committee, I've been pushing the, our, uh, the uh, department to look into what's called the chart process, as a joint area uh, response team, to really review this application. I'm very glad to see our MPP, uh, Parm Gill, here tonight, and I thank you for your cooperation, sir, because this is what we need assistance at, at all levels, and we appreciate your involvement because it's something that's a community effort. Um, my job description within, as ch chair and chief executive officer in includes responsibility for fostering activities that ensure the, well, the social, economic, and environmental well-being of every Halton resident. When I take office as Halton Regional Chair, you will see me take an absolute stand on all these issues. I'll be with the Action Committee and I'll be with everyone else. You will see me so much, you'll be thinking I'm your next door neighbor, okay? <laughs> Way back here, sir. Way back here. You felt that internet is a priority for this area, the rural area. <laughs> Can we all just say yes? <laughs> 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 the honesty is. Okay, so, uh, how, how are they going to solve this problem? How do we solve that problem? And that's a better question. So, uh, maybe we'll start with the mayor. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, if I had the silver bullet for this, I wouldn't be running for mayor, uh, let me tell you. It's a uh, province-wide issue, especially with uh, rural areas, and of course the, uh, the providers, you know, rather it be Bell, rather it be Rogers or whoever, are the people that uh, not only the province, but local municipalities have to work with. And council got on record more than once on really keeping you know, the individual providers, their feet to the fire on providing those services. So we're in on this. And, and it's the way of the future. There's no question about it. Of course, the buggy days are gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be advocating the providers, basically. I wanted to let them know this is really important for now, for this board especially, because it's not, it's, it's the necessity of our lives nowadays, because without the internet, it's kind of hard to live in, because everybody wants to be on the internet before they sleep. So it's part of the life, and I will be advocating each and everyone, doesn't matter if I have to go through Mr. Permgill to get this done, uh, or provincial government, or federal government, doesn't matter who I have to approach, I'll be lobbying it out. Definitely, it needs to be done for you guys, it's really important, and I'll be there for you. Thank you. If I had the silver bullet for this, I wouldn't be running for mayor, uh, let me tell you. It's a uh, province-wide issue, especially with uh, rural areas, and of course the, uh, the providers, you know, rather it be Bell, rather it be Rogers or whoever, are the people that uh, not only the province, but local municipalities have to work with. And council got on record more than once on really keeping, you know, the individual providers, their feet to the fire on providing those services. So. We're in on this, and, and it's the way of the future. There's no question about it. Of course, the buggy days are gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be advocating the providers, basically. I wanted to let them know this is really important for now, for this board especially, because it's not, it's, it's the necessity of our lives nowadays, because without the internet, it's kind of hard to live in because everybody wants to be on the internet before they sleep. So it's part of the life, and I will be advocating each and everyone, doesn't matter if I have to go through Mr. Permgill to get this done, uh, or provincial government, or federal government, doesn't matter who I have to approach, I'll be lobbying it out. Definitely it needs to be done for you guys, it's really important, and I'll be there for you. Thank you. Can I answer, please? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
I have more rural constituents than any one of these people. And this issue has been brought up several times to me as I ran my candidacy. I'm not an expert. I can't tell you what the answer is. However, as Halton Chair, I will have access to the experts who can problem solve this. And it sounds like exclusion from the GTA bundle would be a step in the right direction. And I will do whatever I can to solve this as soon as possible for all Halton rural residents. Yeah, well, just go to my table, you'll see. Regarding heritage, I'm a former chair of the, the you might remember the LACAC committee, or it's now called Heritage Milton. I have a passion and interest in heritage. The town hall was saved by the, the town spending, uh, was it $1, which I still owe? And, and, you know, and basically, you know, saving that building, as well as the number of them. We did the inventory back in the 80s and 90s of this area. And I'm, very, I'm a member of the Milton Historical Society, and I'm quite involved with a number of members. And I actually attend heritage meetings as uh, Councillor Luna up to attend test you, that there is concern. We want to save the best for our past, but also plan for the best for our future. Well, <clears throat> I'll be working with the heritage com um, committees and see how we can protect and protect the history for our future generation. Because this is what we need to show. We need to preserve the heritage for our future generations so they can be part of it. Because right now, if we don't look into it, we don't keep up, we need, so how are they going to see what are the background, what are, where are we coming from? So we need to keep, we need to try committees, we need to work with the heritage committees to see if, how we can keep up and definitely we'll, we will be there and uh, we'll be working with the, with the heritage com committees as well. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Again, uh, going back uh, quite a number of years ago, I bought into the, uh, the heritage aspect of it there. My wife and I, we owned uh, what was called then the Farmer's Building. Some of you probably know it today as the Thompson House. So it's been preserved. Councillor Best mentioned the, uh, the Town Hall. There's several other buildings that uh, we, I have been involved in making sure preservation. One of the, uh, the candidates spoke about property rights. It's a very delicate area there sometimes. Uh, we've always been a little hesitant on designating something without the support of the property owner. And for the most part, when there's something of heritage nature, property owner usually buys into it, so we designate uh, them as well. So it's kind of like a willing buyer, willing seller when it comes to uh, designation. So uh, I'm one. Cliche that I will quite often use, if you don't know where you've been, you sure as heck won't know where you're at. Sure as heck won't know where you're heading. So preserving your history is important. heritage, and there is a Halton heritage, and it would receive my attention, and the property rights associated with it would also receive attention because it's right. The property owner does have to buy into it. And, but that doesn't necessarily say if they don't or a developer doesn't, that it would, the efforts would not be made to continue and, and ensure the heritage factors is are there. Thank you. Uh, I've had, I'd say this is a, the biggest topic of discussion I've had since my name went up. And um, I, I'm just horrified at what is happening, and this to our farmers, and in particular with regards to the region uh, official plan and the Burlington official plan, which are the two that I've heard of. And it amounts to, as this uh, farm owner put it, expropriation of her property what she is being subjected to. And I have committed, and I committed to this on my Kojiko taping, and I only had a couple of minutes to do it, that this will be one of my first priorities, taking on Halton Chair, will be to ensure that we address the official plan as it's affecting our farmers and 
we will not have it wait till 2022 because the farmers will be out of business but they can't farm their property right now. Thank you, Betty, for the question. It's not just agriculture or residential, it's both. And the whole idea of the rural area is you have a rural economy where everybody's interdependent, as some of these new candidates have mentioned. John and I serve on the Halton Agricultural Advisory Committee. Peter Lambert in the back there somewhere. You're back there, Peter, show your hand. He's also on the Natural Heritage Advisory Committee. Those are two important advisory committees that the region is involved with, which are concerned with rural issues. It's something that I've been working on, the other councillors and the mayor have been working on in terms of rural internet, gas expansion into the areas because we have a number of people, a number of farmers that would really could use a conversion to natural gas, and also having the transportation systems around you that you can actually get to work and get back from work without uh, damaging your quality of life. And I'm looking forward to continuing that. Well, again, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Best uh, signaled you out, and uh, Peter, and I'll do it again. Uh, you two individuals plus others have really kept our feet to the fire with regards to especially farming in the agricultural community, and I thank you uh, very much for that. Uh, not only at the local level, but at the regional level as well. Now, mentioned there before the complexity of it, and I think Councillor Lunau had mentioned we're in the Green Belt, we're in the White Belt, we're in the Niagara Scarp, and in every other belt, uh, <laughs> In. So, with regards to future expansion in the rural areas in Halton, you're not going to see much of that. But also keeping in mind that the province has legislated places to grow, uh, and that's going to happen for the most part in already designated urban areas. Will that expand? Probably so in the years to, uh, to come, because that designation is between 40 and 60 percent now, so it's rather significant. Densities is going to be the order of the day. They're going to preserve a lot of the open space that you and I know it today. Well, being as a businessman, I can relate because this is your business and because you earn a lot of, you know, your income probably from there. And as a third party logistic business owner, I know how it works because you, some of the people living in Saskatoon <laughs> actually harvest a lot of crop which they ship out of the country and Canada is one of the best harvesting company for the land that we have where we grow different products. Canola is one of the demanding product or the harvest that we grow in Canada. And being said that that you know, uh, I would say since the provincial legislation that is that we have to cover the land on certain amount of uh, proportion, and it it has to be done, and there is a certain criteria that needs to be taken care. Of, and I believe that if we um, you know talk to provincial government, advocate them, and see how as a uh, ruler uh, you know constituents, you what your requirement are. We definitely look into that and then we'll talk to the provincial government and see how we can vote about it. Thank you. Well, uh, I would say there should be a designated place for it because uh, I live in urban Bolton and I know how it feels. I don't, I don't want to see anybody doing hunting in, in the urban area. Why so, well, we have it here? Sorry. I said we have it here. So why yeah, not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why not in, in the urban area? That's what I'm saying. I, I was coming to the answer for that. Oh, yeah, I would like to finish my answer. Okay, I'm sorry. So you know, I wouldn't see. I wouldn't like anybody like you know. You face the same situation. You know, because I know there are more people living here. There are a lot of population here. It's just not few houses here. I have seen. I've been here before, and I know how. It, how many farms and how many houses are there. So there are people there, the population is, uh, you know, there. When there is enough population, people need to know that there is a, a designated area nest that needs to be assigned where you can do the hunting. If it's close to the residential area, it, there's no point of it. Thank you. Yeah. Chairman, uh, quite often what goes around comes around. Councillor Bess, where we call uh, 
the deer hunting issue in Mountain Back some years ago was a really a real divisive issue. But as an example, uh, hunting, you know, I never owned a gun, never hunted myself, so I don't know a lot about it. But again, you know, like coyotes are an issue, but so is deer and so is rabbits. As an example, uh, you asked the Chudleys that, uh, you know, would they allow hunting on their uh, farm? They invite people in. You have to be invited in, or should be invited into your property if you've got a problem. If it's posted, no trespassing, no hunting, that means exactly that, no hunting. But I'm also well aware that people will come from the city, maybe even from Melton as well, and come out into the country properties. And, and I own, by the way, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, I own country property as well on Appleby Line uh, in Nasty Way too. People hunt at the back there, and I know sometimes with or without my permission, their back there is very wide open. As an example, I sit on a conservation home as well, where they have 10,000 acres of land. You have to get permission if you want to hunt those lands too. <laughs> You know, when that happened, I've got a memory blank. It just blanked out exactly what I was going to say, but that's the question, hunting. What I would be prepared to consider as Halton Chair is a bylaw enforcement program that covers the whole of Halton that will help all the municipalities deal with it because it's a big a uh, big matter for one municipality to handle it, but if you have one for the whole of Halton uh, in the areas where it is, because we definitely have to have animal control, coyotes, etc. One walked past me in, my, in the church uh, parking lot the other day, so I wasn't too happy about that. And um, we have to have animal control, but we also, and we do the deers, there the might have to be a cow or, or, or whatever to take care of those problems. But all in all, they shouldn't be hunting in close to uh, homes, etc. And so I'd be prepared to consider a overall Halton bylaw enforcement, uh, a bylaw and the enforcement officer to back it up. Thank you for the question. This has been an issue over, as the mayor mentioned, many years. And since I've been on council, I believe the uh, discharge of firearms has been reduced three times because of the growing urban area. In the rural area, at present, I, I live you know, in a rural area. I grew up on a farm on Alfie Line. You know, it is concerned. The legitimate hunters that know what they're doing, that know the terrain, I have no problem with. It's the legal ones that are the problem. Mm -hmm. You talk to any member of the Halton Sportsman's Association. They're the ones that are trying to educate people. This is the way to do it. And you use the right weapons. You don't have somebody with a high-powered rifle shooting animals. Just you have short-range ones. Because it is, as Kennedy has mentioned here, a concern in the lawyer. But you have to balance both of them. You have to have people who are knowledgeable of the area and also respect property. If there is no hunting science, you don't hunt. Chairman, I've always been a strong advocate for uh, transit. Nothing has uh, changed. And when you talk about transit for uh, Ward 1, we're all in this together. There's going to be, after this next council, there's going to be four wards, and every one of them is equally as important as far as I'm concerned for, uh, for transit there. And of course, there's always a price to be paid, so things have got to be considered within reason. Uh, you know, of course, you hear a fair bit of criticism from time to time buses running around with nobody on them. Or one or two people, and we're well aware of that. We're well aware on the average cost per ride, so all that has to be considered. But I'm a strong advocate, and that's why Places to Grow is suggesting those densities, because the more people that live in an urban area, the more the transit's going to be used. And I'm well aware of the pilot project uh, that uh, really didn't pan out both the way that we had hoped, including myself uh, there too. But uh, never is a long time will it come back to be more rural area, I suspect one day it will. And I rather suspect, uh, probably not too far away, Mr. Chairman, is uh, transit at the regional level, or even at the GTA and H level. I know that's in the books. Well, <clears throat> transit is it's one of the major issues in Milton. I wouldn't just talk about Ward 1 or rural area, but transit overall 
It's one of the major issues. Because, yeah. you know, uh, transit, right now, the traffic congestion that we have, if we have proper transit in place, that can take part of the congestion away from the roads. And if we have, as Mayor said, there are pilot projects were done and, you know, the buses are empty. But these things can be taken care of. But if we do proper transit uh, issues taken care of right now, because there are influx of people coming all from all over GTA or Ontario to Milton. There are people coming from overseas to Milton. And we need to know there are buildings, the condominiums that they are building in Milton, that they are highly dense population will be coming in the near future. So we need to plan for it right now. The transit issue is not just in ruler or Ward 1. It's all over. People like the kids who's going to McMaster, they have to take the go, station, go bus train, go bus from Highway 25 and 47. They don't even have a transit to from or to Milton from uh, to that go, go bus station. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Yes, this has been a topic of conversation in every municipality where I've spoken to people. It is uh, a disaster, we all know that, and if you think public transport is difficult, try having to use a wheelchair and go for an appointment in another municipality. It's impossible. Paratransit, I was told, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when I worked on the regional committee, that it was on the radar. Mr. Carr's response to the media when, uh, and people who were asking, When's it got, when are we going to have a regional paratransit, uh, said, it's on the radar. Well, I'm sorry, 15 to 20 years is not enough. It would, that, again, would be one of my main priorities that I tackle straight off but also the public transport. And this was said the other night at the, the Milton meeting that one of the biggest factors in uh, businesses not coming is because they can't get their employees in. Good question, but my answer is very similar to the mayor. I support public transit, but in uh, an educated way because unfortunately the extension we tried didn't work out well. And the thing is, we have buses going by Camville every day. They're called GO buses. They go from Milton to Cambridge. If they could have a stop here, it would make a lot more sense so it can connect in with Milton. And another one, by the way, there is a GO bus that goes from Milton to Oakville every day, 13 times a day. My son used it for years. It does connect with 407. Regarding future of transit, Milton's the only community in the council that's actually pushed for regional transit. Some of the regions of Waterloo, Durham, and uh, uh, York regions. It's something that can be done. As the region grows together and people in Halton Hills who have no transit are going to be in for a rude awakening in the next few years when they have between 20 to 200,000 people coming to them. We have to work together because the economies of scale work better when you have a large transit system linking go, linking regional transit, and linking global. It, it's basically a matter of doing it in a balanced way that doesn't cost us too much because you just look at York region, they're actually on credit watch right now because they borrowed too much to do this stuff. We have to make sure that we have something that's affordable and that everybody gets their fair share. Well, there should be a rule uh, representation for Ward 1. And I think I'll be strong and uh, strong advocate for it. And as well as I wanted to let you know that the peril growth for urban or rural that needs to be there. It has to be there because there are many issues. You pay same taxes like we do in urban area. You don't get no services. What are you supposed to? So why not? Why you can't have the same services uh, than you know, like if you compare it to the urban area? So these are the issues. These are the concerns that we should need to be addressed, and we need all of you. All single one of you to be engaged, you need to come forward and put your name and let, let us know what is your problem and we are here to address them. If I get elected, definitely I wanted to end the status quo. I wanted to hear you, every single one. I wanted to see what is your problem, what are your concerns, what are your issues. I'm here, I'm here and I'll be there. Thank you.
you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I heard the uh, the question, of course, leadership come into the, uh, the question there. And of course, uh, there's records that can be uh, checked, uh, certainly, as to where I stood on it. One of the candidates had mentioned democracy. Democracy was alive and well when those decisions were, uh, were made. <laughs> Men mention was also made of opening it back up. Well, whoever's on the next council, they can put anything forward. If they want to go back to a different ward system, they can advocate for that. There's no, no problem with that. Keeping in mind that uh, there was a consultant uh, that was engaged, and that was some of their uh, recommendation that was supported by the majority of council. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Can I throw my shoe at him? No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You, you, you <laughs> voted for the new tax. Please, on everybody, the No, no, it's no. It's Chairman, uh, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. You check the record. Check the record. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Check the final record. Find it because you're wrong. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, uh, Melbourne Council has always supported uh, or supported against the uh, the uh, quarry site there, which of course is not in Halton. It's not in Melbourne. But as Councillor Luna had mentioned, you know the, the water issue, the truck traffic issue, would definitely affect. Uh, you know, a portion of uh, Paulton, Paulton Hills, Acton area in the northern uh, part of uh, Mass Wit. And we did put our money where our mouth was, as Councillor Luno had uh, suggested. So to suggest that we never fought against it is really wrong and just a little misleading. Well, I'll be your strong advocate for this because I definitely will be there and I'll be here and you will find me anytime you, you can, you know, I'll, you, I'll be there for you because I'm, I'm here for the public, not for myself. I don't have any game just to get the position and I'll be, you know, running the town for no reason. It's, it's for the public that I'm willing to step up. And if I'm there for you, definitely you'll find me behind you and I'll be there to support you. Thank you. As I mentioned with the other quarry, yes, I'm definitely uh, in favor of the residents of the area. Not only been attended the public meetings, some of you may remember when uh, Councillor Luna and I spoke there, Milton's the one that's going to be affected the most. We're downwind, downstream, and down the road from this quarry. We're going to be the one affected mostly by the traffic because those truckers aren't going to go through Acton. They're going to go down 5th and 6th line. So we definitely have an interest, and I've been working with uh, Councillor Somerville, the Ward Councillor for Halton Hills, and Mayor Burnett at the region in terms of our defence against this because the region has a significant interest in this issue. description would be to ensure the well the environmental well-being of every Halton resident. October the 23rd, 2018, I would expect a phone call from you, sir, if you pick up my card right there with my direct line and to bring me up to speed on what the problems are. Because of course at this point I don't know what the issues are. But I would be expect the very first phone call I would receive would be from you, sir, to make sure that I'm brought up to speed. Yes. That's on this issue, this is one thing that, uh, again, the region has taken the lead on this issue with talking the GTA. We have a representative on that board. And one thing we requested, as the town of Milton did, is noise monitoring the Milton area. The GTAA, which is the Greater Toronto Airports Authority, has got six initiatives to reduce the noise. A lot of it is phasing out the older aircraft and putting in you know, more regulations and basically highlighting that you know, the traffic's going to double over the next 20 years, they've estimated. And it's something Milton has seen for the last 65 years. It's basically balancing the needs of air traffic with the needs of the residents, and that's why we continue to do so. Noise is a health hazard. I used to work um, in England, I used to work for a department, noise and vibration, which did all the studies, etc., which so showed, and this is going back 40 years, the, the impact on communities and individuals of noise. It is a health hazard, it is a health issue, and I would be right there to determine 
what is the best for Halton residents and how we can keep the noise to a minimum level. Thank you. Well, I was there when the town council where one of the delegates actually brought up this issue. And I'm really concerned about this, and definitely I'll be looking into that, and I'll be your voice to the provincial, if it has to be to a provincial government or federal government, I'll be uh, your voice for that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, uh, roughly uh, 25 hours from now, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, I am meeting with the GTAA. Uh, it's their meeting, and again, the council called that uh, for that to come together, and it is coming together tomorrow morning. And I want to recognize Olga Shushan. I know Olga's here. Olga, where are you? Where are you hiding? <laughs> she, she has been quite. She's been put. Well, it's not. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not Well, Mr. Chairman, if you'd let me... Okay, yeah, all right, you can make your point. Yeah, I'll make your point, Olga. I singled old Olga because she's taking a lead role in this. I'm complimenting her, believe it or not. Okay, believe it or not. She's been very involved, and she's been in touch with uh, my office uh, today, uh, wanting to attend. As far as I'm concerned, and I can speak personally, she could attend, and I think that she's well aware of that. But it's not my meeting, it's called by the GTA and A, and they're, they're the ones that call who's going to be there. I'm one of the ones that's present. And I'm always very transparent what I do and what I say, unless there's something that's, you know, something hidden that I'm not aware of. I'll be sharing with the public what that meeting's all about tomorrow. But Olga, if I had my way, you'd be there. Because you took a lead role at it, that council meeting. It's not my meeting, it's uh, the airport authority. Yeah, thank you for the question. I was expecting it and I attended the meeting along with uh, Mayor Krantz with some of the affected residents. Yes, I am well aware. I, I also have a septic system. I understand the concerns. Do you fix the system or put in a new one or do you wait for the sanitary sewers? Unfortunately, the developers, when they got approved in 2014, said they're all gung ho, they're going to put it in and give everybody in that area all 100 homes. Yes, sir. I, I understand there's a problem, but how can you get everybody together so every certain problem point, you know, no. say, who's going to pay for what? Okay. So well, what that, you that's need that's action on behalf of well, your constituents. Well, exactly. As, as I mentioned at that meeting, sir, and for anyone else's knowledge, it's something that if you live in the Milton Heights area, you have water, you have town water, but you don't have sewers on very small lots. This is a, the problem that I've seen for, for years. I used to appraise properties in this area. I know the issues you have. I'll be having a meeting, and as the mayor you know, mentioned, after the election, once we know who's going to, who all the players are, and sit down with all everyone so we sit and get the same information at the same time to get this done and get it over with. Because I'm on the Planning Public Works Committee at the region. We're pushing to get the Tremaine Road uh, access to 401 <coughs> done by 2022. That's one of my campaign pledges. And it's going to go right through that area. It should be serviced at the same time or before. First, I've heard of the issue, as you can well imagine. But I agree with what Colin said. And I would hope, and, and I know, it would be one of those parties that brought together would be the regional chair. Okay? I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, again, uh, Rocky uh, and I, uh, we go back a long, long way. We've had these conversations more than once, but for the most part, I can only echo what uh, Councillor Best had just uh, suggested. It's nothing more, nothing less than economics. And who's going to pay for it? Because the last that I had heard, and Colin, correct me if I'm wrong, we're talking about an $8 million uh, bill, so who's going to pay and who's going to pay uh, so much? But getting the, uh, the parties together is really what it's all about, to see if the economics will work. And if it doesn't work, I don't know what will happen. You know? yeah, no I have no ideas. But it comes down to the dollar and cents. Uh, keep in mind that this is a regional issue. 
Right today, I'm still a regional councillor, as Councillor Best is. Who knows in a month's time? But that's where the decision is going to make, be made. And there's going to be, what, 24 regional councillors with Oakville with eight, Burlington with seven, Mountain with five, and Halton Hills with three. So that's where the decision will be made. I think the biggest majority of this present day council is on side with it. The only question is, who's going to pay? So as for Mayor and Colin, that we don't know exactly when it's going to be happen, and uh, it's a region issue, but we need to advocate them. We need to bring everybody on the same board. We need to tell other region councillors, we need to come along with the, we need to speak with other mayor, that these are the issues, these are the concern of yours. It could be mine if I were here. So if you're paying the same tax, why you don't have the service? I'm the advocate for this. I will be representing you in, by myself, or I have to advocate in, along, along with Ann or Gary, whoever is going to be elected. I'll be there for your voice. Thank you. Thank you for all for coming here, taking your time from a busy schedule on the weeknight, and uh, really appreciate for that. And the reason for me to be here that, you know, I'm not a career politician, but, and I put my name forward for the public, for the community that I live in, I love Milton. When I moved here in 2014, um, you know, uh, I wasn't expecting this, because I've, I've, you know, this is a great town, and we need to stay together. We need to issue, listen to each other. This is why I decided to run. I have seen a lot of issues that that are infrastructure issues, transit issues, you know, service issues in rural area. It's not about that. It's about other. We need to put everything together. We need everybody to come together and support. I'll be the voice in region. I'll be your voice in provincial and federal government. I'll be representative of you. I'll be the, there. My doors will be open for you anytime. And I hope you will vote for me on October 22nd. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chairman, thank you uh, very much and all the, uh, the organizers for getting us uh, together here this evening. Uh, there. Uh, I know this meeting here is all about Ward 1. Okay, it's all the candidates in Ward 1. Uh, last week, a week ago, there was another uh, Meet the Candidates meeting, and it was just for uh, Ward 1. As mentioned by one of the previous speakers, we're all in this together, regardless of what Ward it is. One, two, three, or four. So I want to remind everyone of uh, that and the importance of that. Uh, this Saturday at the Mountain Senior Center from 9 to 4, uh, it's with the, uh, the candidates, wards 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's different time slots for, uh, for each one of those, and, and I'm well aware of the time slot that uh, the mayor's uh, candidates are from 3 to 4. I'm not sure when the others are, but there's a schedule. I know, excuse me, I didn't bring it with me. But, Show up there and listen to what the other uh, ward candidates have to say with uh, all of us in this uh, together. So it's that leadership that I keep coming back at, at and uh, you know, I think I've demonstrated that over the, uh, the years. So being on October 22nd, mark that X for Prince. <laughs> Thank you, John, for moderating, Liz, and the CCA for organizing, and all of you for attending. You showed up, unlike my opponents again. <laughs> we have the MP chair routine. This is the third time in a the week they've uh, missed an opportunity to be in the public and actually do something. I show up. I've been there. Many of you know me from events and committees throughout Nassau Way in the rural area and urban area. Because as, uh, as uh, other candidates have mentioned, we're in this together. Not only at the local level, regional, and provincial because there's a lot of changes coming at the provincial level. Who has the talent here, the ability and the experience to deal with those provincial changes? I believe I'm that candidate. On October 22nd, please vote best. I forgot to say, um, my husband Dave, I've been married to him for 52 years, he sat in the front row there, and with the parents are 
three boys, and we have three daughters-in-law, and the mean age of them is exactly the same mean age as Milton. So I understand two of them are business owners, trying to run their own business in this kind of economy, etc. So as their parents, we get to hear all their troubles, we know that, but as well, I had a mum, uh, of course I had a mum, I had a mum who lived in uh, Allendale in Milton for many years, and um, I, uh, my background is healthcare, audit, etc. And I prepared a paper on my mother's interaction with the Halton healthcare system. I was asked to present it at an international uh, conference, and out of 50 presenters, only 20 were uh, selected for it as an educational tool, and mine was one of them. So you know, I have the background in every age, I had at every age and every problem, business, families, housing, affordable housing, <laughs> subsidized housing, any of them. And I expect you to get in touch with me to tell me what your problems are. October 22nd, Anne Marsden, Regional Care, Chair, Carr has not shown up at any single debate. He's not listening to you. <laughs>